Hey everyone, I believe this is the second half of session six, which is why you see me starting right away in here with him. And right now I'm just getting him used to a more firm touch and rubbing kind of around the shoulder area, the girth area on the neck. And he seems pretty relaxed with it. You can tell he's still paying attention though because that ear is turning towards me, so I'm being aware of that. But I broke this session into two because this was definitely one of our longer ones. I believe it was probably about 25, maybe 30 minutes. I'm still trying to give little releases here, even though he's showing me that he's pretty comfortable with it. He's, he's not too worried. He's blinking pretty slow. And just like always, switching it back up now. Now I'm using it to drive, so I start really slow with my energy, and then I get bigger. As soon as he moves out, I let that energy relax. So anytime I want him to walk, I'm going to be relaxed with my energy. And then if I ask him to increase speed at any moment, then I ask with my voice first, I make cue with my hand, and then I go to use the stick to add a little bit more energy in there. So right now he's trying to break from the trot to the walk, and I just want him to keep a trot going. That way we can practice yielding the hindquarters there. So he's really walking out of it, so this is when I really follow through with those hips. Good. I know a couple people were commenting before on the amount of bumping I was doing on the lead rope, but like I was saying, he is in a flat, I believe it's a leather halter actually, um, a flat leather halter. I don't have those pressure points on his face quite yet, and, and I'm thinking about further down the road where it's going to become a big issue if he realizes he can just push through pressure and kind of pull you around in it. So I'd rather earlier on help him out by kind of giving him those boundaries initially and teach him that he has to be soft to that pressure and give. So that's why you may see that the bumping is a little bit harsher than some people may like. But again, right there, I'm trying to follow through with that hip, ask him to move it. He did not want to. He learned to get that leverage with his head and his neck. So right now, all I'm doing is getting him to give again to that rope. And then working on that desensitizing, he got a little set off again. So again, I need him to give to it. He can't just plow through it. Now the reason that this can become dangerous later on is if I take him out of the pen and we start walking and he decides to pull away, he may get loose from me. He may try to go and mount the other horses since he is technically a stud. He may run away and not want to be caught again, especially since he's just this green to being caught. So I need him to understand how to softly and lightly give to that pressure so I can have him be safe for the farrier to handle, for the vet to handle, for anyone else to handle so I can take him out of his pen. And sometimes to do that, you need to be a little bit more firm with them. Right there, all I was doing was readjusting my rope and kind of making a little bit of a boundary. I didn't make contact with him. But I do remember when he did use his neck leverage and take off and move, what he did was kind of spook at me tossing that rope up and around. So we're going back to working on that, yielding the hindquarters, getting him desensitized again to all of that. Good, back to approach because I don't want him being worried around me. Good, and I'm sure I go back again to sending him out, making sure I can get that hip. Good, so sometimes I just take moments like that where I rest, I pause, I let him think for a bit. So right there, I need to be a little bit more conscious to when I picked that stick up and kind of was setting up to get into place but didn't have energy in my body, I could see his head and his ears moving watching back on film. And um, I needed to be a little bit more aware of that and make sure that he's okay before we progress. And now right here, he's kind of spooking at my body when I jump in place. So I'm sure a lot of you have heard the saying, the best way to make a spooky horse calm is by being spooky yourself. So that's how, you know, horses that are usually really jumpy, their owners try to be cautious around them. But the best thing to do is also be like reactive yourself. So now we have that to add in too. So what you saw there in that clip, there was a lot that happened. So first you heard me correcting myself, and then there you see him really resisting giving to that pressure. So I said, okay, you know what, I'm not going to pull with you. I'm not going to fight you right now, so let's move forward. If you need to do something with your energy instead of going up, let's go forward with it. 
So that's a really big problem that I don't want him to get into, is I don't want him rearing to avoid pressure, because that's when horses can start rearing up on their hind end, turning around and getting that leverage. So again, he's kind of resisting giving to it. There we go, we got that hip around. As soon as he moves that hip around, I release everything. And now he can be at a further distance from me when I'm jumping around. He doesn't have to be right next to me yet. We're going to start at his threshold distance. Good, I like that he's able to lead straight forward here. But like I was saying, it's really important he doesn't learn that rear up trick, which is why you saw me probably for about 10 seconds there really push him forward because I'm a super big believer of if your horse has energy, don't try to keep it all cooped up. Don't try to wrestle with it the way it is. Let them move a little bit if they need to. Good. Of course, going right back to the rubbing and tossing over his neck and back so he doesn't create some sort of fear with the stick. And I know some people may think that I switch back and forth between methods a lot, and I do, honestly. I just go to fit the horse. I don't necessarily have one thing that I stick to. Because you can see sometimes I'm really, really paying attention to all of those body language and cues from him, which I try to do all the time now. Um, that's one of my things I'm trying to switch over to more is really listening to that horse and giving them even more breaks and trying everything with an even softer, lighter energy. But at some times, like you saw me do there, the best thing to do was to send him forward. However, I'm not going to run him around the ground then until he's tired and can't breathe and then can't move. I still want him to have the option to move, but I gave him a output for his energy right then. And now we're working on standing closer, yielding the hindquarters, going to desensitization, hopefully getting him to do it a lighter, easier going way here. Coming back to some of that jumping. So you can see I kind of unlock my knees and crouch down like super quick and kind of jump and that's my way of like spooking. You know how horses sometimes walk around and then when they spook at something their thing is to kind of just jump in place and then snort. I mimic that because usually that scares them a little bit but if I can do that get them calm, desensitized to it, make sure they understand that I'm not coming towards them, there's no energy, it's just me doing it in place, then they tend to lose that reaction themselves. So this was one big thing, was getting desensitization over his ears, and I don't think it was so much the motion um, and like the physical appearance of it as it was the noise that it could make if I did it fast. So that's something else that's really big. A lot of people forget about noise desensitizing, and I find that's a super big one I try to cover, especially before I get on them. Usually I have my phone playing music right on their withers, kind of to mimic like where I would be talking, or I'll stand on a mounting block and play music all around them, hold my phone up there, talk above them, reach over them. Um, those are all things that will be really important for this guy pretty soon in life if they decide to start him, but the biggest thing right now is making sure that he can get enough proper handling to go to the vet. Good. Really liking that reaction there. I'm super impressed with how good he is with his front legs being touched. I was very happy with him with this, so I didn't work on it too much. He let me run the stick down both sides, kind of itch on it, and he could have cared less. I was very proud of him. So now sending him back out, I click. Then I really add some pressure there because I don't want him to be dull and freeze in place either. So this is where he got into a little bit of a habit for a session or two where he wanted to jump up and kind of rear out to move and not just go forward. So immediately, try to get him to yield his hip again. So you can see I didn't add any pressure there and he went to jump out just like he did right there too. So I'm going to make sure he realizes he needs to be soft. Good, which is why I don't necessarily try to keep that constant pressure. You see me pulling, but then I release as soon as his nose gives in. Good, so I want him to move out, but I don't want him to take his head and neck with him and kind of yank it away. So asking really soft with my pressure. As soon as I start to increase, that's when he wants to get resistant. So 
it's going to be hard to see, but you can see a little bit of the shadow still. But he is starting to bulge with his shoulder and kind of just take it and go. Good, so I really want to establish that soft leading. Most important thing. Because if he gets into the habit of pulling like that, it's going to be really hard to break outside of the round pen when he's getting loose. Good, so that was super soft, where I really lightly asked him to go, and then he kind of just gently took his nose to the outside, and I was like, no, that's not the right answer. Gave him a quick correction there. He's still trying to pull and kind of get away. Now, the other reason that I'm doing this is you noticed before, I didn't really care if he put his nose out as long as he went out the direction I was asking. He could go at any speed. He could go any way to get that direction anything like that but now what I'm doing is raising my expectations for him when we're outside of the round pen in an arena working around a trailer we're not gonna have fencing necessarily so we can't rely on the rail he needs to know that he can't pull out with that outside shoulder there I am yielding the hindquarters off the rail so why he started doing this was one because of the pressure he started to get a little bit done with the session he's a little bit bored and also because I'm asking him to stay off the rail, so I'm actually practicing lunging now because, you know, I have the rope on him and he's going around wearing it, but it's not necessarily lunging because we're using the round head still. I just have that rope on to help with the hindquarters. But now I'm saying, hey, stay on this inside circle around me. Don't just use the rail. Good, that was a very soft give that time. So anytime he's putting his nose out and trying to pull away, I give a quick little reminder bump. Good. Now there is a way to teach this with shaping and positive reinforcement, but given I only have a couple days to work with him, we're just going to work through it the more normal way. Good. Much softer with its hip. That was very nice. But it is very normal for them to want to try to pull out when you start teaching them lunging and try to go to that outside track because they just don't understand yet. I'm very impressed with his standing still desensitization. He was always really good about this. I mean, even around the hindquarters there, that was barely reaction. He got a little worried, so he moved back, so I went to going over his back again and his flank instead of behind him. Good, so that was a little further back. That was a much better reaction. Again, deciding just to check out there. I do have to be firm with him. I can't just let him pull on me or it would get worse. Good. He's such a sweet horse, too. He's really been great to work with. And I know some people just like to show the good, but I do want to show you guys every session. And I'm not perfect. I'm definitely trying to improve in spots, which is why you're going to hear me make some critiques to myself sometimes. But I do want to explain my thought process for everything and the reason why I do certain things. Right now I'm just trying to find that itchy spot on him, and I think I might be prepping to change his halter to a rope halter. Just the difference between day one with him now, he's so much happier. really important when you're working your horse to have at least a couple little breaks like this where you're really just kind of giving them attention, scratching them, or leaving them alone if your horse is a more sensitive skinned horse. Sometimes the best thing is to give them some space. But I believe this is near the end of this session with him. So you can see my sessions never really involve a lot of 
running, a lot of hard work. My horse is like almost never sweating at the end. It's a lot of mental stuff. And you can see we're trying to make a breakthrough today with coming off the rail. Good, so tossing that lead rope over from a closer area. So what I'm working on right now is actually haltering. So the reason I toss that over is because it kind of feels like the end of the rope halter going over, getting him used to that motion from a close distance, because you know I was tossing the stick and string from a further distance with him. But I want to make sure that when I'm close to him, that doesn't change things. Now what I'm going to do is practice not only putting it around his neck, moving it around his neck, but slipping it up over his nose. Get him used to that rope feeling. Before I take the halter off and then maybe really struggle to get to him. Making sure I can touch everywhere on his face, moving that halter all around. I found the best thing to practice is again tossing that lead rope over the neck and then being able to get it up over that nose. So we didn't do too much leading work in this session, but we're still having that forward movement. You can see every time he steps forward and it's kind of soft, I give. So that is the end of session six with this Crypt Orchid. I thought he did awesome. I know it looked like a little bit of a tougher session because we had to break through that little issue there and it may pop up again in the next session. I can't fully remember, but I do know by the time that I was able to finish with him, he did really awesome. Thank you guys so much for watching and I hope you stay tuned for session seven where I believe I do get to change out his halter.